children of God, praise the Lord. My name is Reverend Engineer Fataki Gabriel. I work as the Grant and Research Officer in the office of the Bishop of South Missouri Diocese. I'm grateful to the Lord for the opportunity through the Online Church of Uganda to reach out and share God's word this afternoon. Our word is from uh, the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 10 to verse 16. And our theme is our calling depends on God's mercy. Let's just read the word. Romans chapter 9 from verse 10 to verse 16. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived the children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I'll have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. Friends, let's bow our heads and pray. Gracious Savior, we thank you for your word that you've chosen to speak to us this afternoon. About our calling, depending on your mercy. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will speak to us and make this more clearer that we can all yield to the authority of your will through Christ our Lord and Savior. Friends, in the next few minutes, I want to share with you the will of God in regard to our calling. Over time, I've learned that what we do, our use of works, is totally different from the call that comes from God. When I went to theology to study my, my course for ordination, many of my friends asked me, that engineer, what are you looking for? You were into consultancy, doing a lot of work in Uganda and all over the world. Why are you wasting your time? And I told my friends that the will of God has called me to a special calling. And friends, I never regret that I'm serving God in this capacity. And I want to thank him. According to the scripture in verse 10, we see a promise being made to Rebecca. And this is happening way before his, her children are actually born. When you read Genesis chapter 25, I'll read a few verses. And starting from verse 21. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his prayer and Rebekah his wife conceived the children struggled together within her and she said if it is thus why is this happening to me so she went to inquire of the Lord and the Lord said to her Two nations are in your womb, and two people from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. Friends, you see the will of God happening on these two children that are yet to be born. And God is making a pronouncement of his will that the younger shall be served by the older. And these are twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau is the elder. They are coming from the womb of Rebekah. Same father, same mother. But God is pronouncing his will about each one of them. 
And as you can see, that the choice of Jacob against Esau, his elder brother, is not depending on how much works that Jacob has done. Jacob, God does not need any pleasing actions from anyone for his will to be done. This is happening. God is making this clear even before Esau and Jacob are born. And so, friends, in verse 12, this promise to, to Rebekah that the younger will be served by the older is God's will at this time. And why? Because God wants to make it clearer about the coming and the God's purpose of election to be able to happen in the, against the people of Israel. So in verse 13, it continues that Esau is the hated one and Jacob is the loved one. So it brings a question here. Naturally, anybody will ask, does therefore God separate us and make others uh, hated and others loved? And why would God do such? And verse 14, it was asked, is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Friends, the compassion of God is unlimited. The mercies of God are unlimited. Just this afternoon, my wife on our family page was sharing a story about Moses crossing the Red Sea and the adverse team of Pharaoh, very powerful soldiers coming on chariots, were coming to pick God's people. And the mercies of God are exhibited imminently as you see them walk in that video on dry land through the sea. And whatever God did, all of us know to rescue his own people. God can exhibit, can show his unlimited compassion, unlimited love, mercies to each one of us in an amazing way. But the question is, does he now, does he show it to some people and not to others? Friends, God is just in choosing one over the other. And I want to assure you, God is very just in choosing one over the other. In many portions of the scripture, God has preferred his people, the Israelites, over many other groups, many other tribes. And he's very, very justified to why he's making that choice. God is just in a way that none of us, not one of us, deserve to be saved. And if we can simply appreciate that, that from the beginning, we lost it all, and none of us deserve to be saved. So destruction and whatever challenges that come our way, we really deserve that. So it is just by the grace of God, it's just by the will of God, it's just by the mercies of God that we are called to be saved. And friend, salvation is purely on the mercies of God. And this is my desire for each one of you, that we shall yield to the call of God, that we shall yield to the mercies of God, that the will of God, when it comes to your way, do not hesitate, because that's where your salvation will come from. Friends, as I conclude, verse 16, verse 16 was saying, so then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. Friends, it purely depends on God's mercy. Your calling depends on God's mercy. Your survival each day depends on God's mercy. I don't know what kind of authority you claim you have. Sometimes people have spoken as if they are immortal. Sometimes people have mistreated others as if for them they are here for eternity. And the psalmist in verse 
4 of 144. Chapter 144 says, we are simply a path of wind. In Psalms 39 verse 5, he says, our life is compared to a path of wind. He just say, Foo! and it is no more. That's who we are. But friends, each day that we live, each day that we live and walk, that we breathe, it's by the grace and mass of God. May I therefore, friends, invite you that salvation then is not regarded as based on our human free will. Or our effort. We do not deserve it at all. Not by our own effort. But may I invite you that we shall all yield to the will of God. That we may be saved. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.